Aloha. It's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock, and that means it's Trump week. Today's title for today's show is Trump sells medical quackery to fight COVID-19. Well, if you um, watched last week, we hadn't been given the show of shows, and that was Donald Trump's, um, basically his brainstorming of that the ingestion of clean, cleaning solutions, disinfectants, and the introduction of UV light could somehow uh, take care of the disease as long as it was properly introduced inside the human body. I'm gonna read a quote because it gets to the heart of the matter of what he said and then his response after what he said um, when the reporters asked him about his, his statements about adding bleach and disinfectants into the human body. He said on, on Thursday, so supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that it hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, which you can do either through the skin or in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. So here we had Donald Trump talking about the introduction of light into the human body and disinfectants. When asked about that statement later on, he said, I was being sarcastic. I was talking to the media. I was talking to the press and I wanted to gauge their response. Well, if anyone saw that interview, they saw Dr. Bricks basically freeze up in a statue-like position and pretend she wasn't listening to it. And he was looking directly at him and he was basically inquiring whether or not they were gonna test his brainstorm of an idea of disinfectant and UV light. So what we saw as far as response was the great gaslighting that only Donald Trump can provide, not only to the room of reporters, but to the American public. We're gonna talk about this and other topics here today. I wanna to introduce our guests today, Winston Welch. I wanna introduce, hello, Winston. I wanna introduce hello. Stephanie Dalton and hello. Cynthia Sinclair. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Winston, let's go to you because um, our last Thursday, and it seems like two weeks ago, not, not less than a week ago, but uh, that was a hell of a statement that uh, Donald Trump came up with and it basically caused him to leave the stage. He embarrassed himself enough that he, he didn't come back on the weekend at all to uh, do his task force briefings, and I think he was embarrassed. Well, actually, he wasn't embarrassed, but I think his staff was embarrassed, and he kept off the stage. What do you think about the whole thing since last, last Thursday, Winston? Uh, if I, it's, emotion might be sad, sad that, that uh, this is our leadership. You know, you compare this with the leader of, uh, of uh, New Zealand or of, uh, you know, it, any civilized nation, really, Germany. Look at, look at, the, at the chancellor they have there. Why do we have, even if Donald Trump knows, uh, I mean, that he's not the right person there. He won't let anybody else stand in. And Deborah Burks sitting there, and she apologized for him later and said, I can't believe the media is still on this. That was even more sad because we looked towards her and Anthony Fauci to say, they don't have, we don't ask them to directly contradict him just to come up and tell the truth. But when they're up there defending that, that was actually kind of more How much, how much uh, credibility did she lose as a scientist in, in our eyes, do you think? As far as science, I'm not sure about science, but uh, as far as points with the sane American public, a lot. Because then they said, wait a minute, it's, if she's apologizing for him and saying, oh, this is the a media smear, you guys shouldn't be on this. She's missing the point, which is your true message isn't going to get out when you're defending this other message. Just go on with what you have to say and say it. But yeah, I, I mean, overall, I was, it's par for the court person. I think, you know, everybody said, oh, this is the defining moment. We have learned with Donald Trump, there is no defining moment. There is no anything that will get him off the stage or have his people stop following him. They spun it immediately. This is liberal media. This is sarcasm. This is whatever. And the whole thing was lost on the masses. Uh, that we yeah. One, one quick here. question, Winston, and that is, he clearly was gaslighting the reporters in that room. Should the reporters be a little bit uh, faster on their toes to call him out on it? Um, call him out on his gaslighting? And because he certainly is getting away with it. And and people aren't really taking note of it. I mean, I think they know it's happening. They just don't, they don't call it up. Well, I'm happy to see that the folks are doing their jobs as reporters and that he's had some challenges saying, wait a minute, how can you really say this here? But for the people that, the half the nation that is already on that ship, it says, 
did he just say what I thought he said? Yes, but for the other half, it doesn't matter. So they need to keep doing it though. That is their job is so that maybe someday it sinks in and says, this is our leader telling us to do this rather than just being a uh, caring, concerned figure saying, we're doing all we can here, folks. And I'm going to turn this over to the experts to give you some advice. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie, what do you think? I certainly support all that, that Winston said. I, I feel that she has uh, betrayed us and uh, d went out of her lane. Her lane was to be the scientist, the competent, renowned, accomplished scientist that she purported to be and that she is out of her resume. Her, uh, so what happened? Um, I wonder uh, if that meant there were some behind the scenes words or did she get any instruction about how to handle that? And if she did, that would be a little bit of another story or threats for possibly. Uh, I don't know. So with her stepping out like that, what what prompted that? What what was her um, intention and motivation for that? Did it really come from her? Anyway, she's ruined uh, the one um, the one track we have, you know, directly into serious scientific information because now I realize she's uh, she'll she'll cave. Yeah. Let me ask you this. On Monday of this week, Donald Trump basically said he takes no responsibility for the multiple increased calls and inquiries to poison control centers in the state of New York, Illinois, Maryland, and around the country. He said, I take no responsibility. Well, basically, that's what he said in so many words. Um, that doesn't surprise me, but is it is it just part of the gaslighting that we received um, during these briefings that he he it was he was trying to be sarcastic. Did you note any sarcasm in his voice, or or how he was talking to the press, or he wasn't talking to the press when he introduced the idea of disinfectants and UV light? Uh, no, I detected none, and I looked at it a couple of times, and I'm uh, appalled because the man is a father, and uh, then when you think that he does have that role, then you recall what his biographers have said that actually he paid absolutely no attention to the children on the way. But so I don't see where he takes any responsibility for anything except his own self-aggrandizement and this dream of consciousness access he gives us to that mental life that he has, which is, is not up to the demands uh, on him that we we know are there and he, he can't step up to it. He can't do any better. He can't own up to it, yeah. Hey, Cynthia. You saw it. What did you think of it all, the whole business? I, and, and, and what do you think is his response and, and, and where we are today with uh, the fact that this was a monumental moment for Donald Trump to put out there? And I know it's not in the news, you know, headlines every day, but will this follow him to the election? This, this horrible um, brainstorm of his about uh, the introduction of disinfectants and UV light in the human body. What do you think, Cynthia? Well, I would hope it would follow him to the election. And we've seen this kind of gaslighting all along through his whole entire presidency. Every time he makes a mistake, he says, oh, I was joking, or I was just being sarcastic. Um, all of that, that's to his, his normal fallback. Does he get away with it this time? Well, I think he'll get away with anything with his base. But I think he changed the minds of a lot of people with this, you know, and I, I was on Facebook just yesterday and there's a, a gal that I know who loves Trump and she comes up with this picture of a bus going through this um, UV light desans um, sanitizing uh, process. And we already know it doesn't work. And so here she's trying to put forward that he was just a genius, that Tesla came up years ago with light therapy. And, and it is true that for many years, doctors used light therapy. They stopped because they found out it doesn't work. As a hairdresser for many years, we used to use ultraviolet in glass tubes for facial treatments. We stopped doing that because it doesn't work. So, so we already have the evidence of of light therapy not being effective. And then we also have the evidence of not being able to ingest any kind of um, disinfectant into our bodies. And like you said, you know, the, 
the numbers for the calls to poison control skyrocketed everywhere. And I think what this showed is, doc one big thing anyway that this showed <clears throat> is Dr. Burke's sycophant self that I sort of have recognized all along, but it came out full blown, undeniable now. So I don't see how any of us can trust her if she's willing to cover for him with something that dramatic. And Good death. point. Good point. Well, you know, this week we also have found out a little more detail about the number of briefings, and it looks like it's 10 or 12 separate briefings that U.S. intelligence agencies, specifically CIA, put in those briefings for Donald Trump that specifically back in January and February said, we've got a real problem with COVID-19 um, and its impact on the United States and, and, and its citizens, sorry, of the citizens of the United States. Um, basically, David Press was a former CIA officer, and he said, I would put that in the, the, the prep, the, the, the briefings. Now, whether or not he looked at them, probably not. We know that Donald Trump has a disdain for these agencies because they were ones that said Russia was partly responsible for meddling in the election of 2016. So he didn't like that. And he didn't, he didn't agree with them. He, he trusted Putin more than he did our own intelligence agencies. So now then in January of 2020, they're saying, hey, we got a real problem with this potential pandemic. Um, he blew it off. And he's, we have him on in record that he basically was devaluating the whole idea of COVID-19. So now that these are coming to play, um, what do you think? Do you think that he's going to pay attention to that or just, as usual, just brush it off? Are you asking me? Yes. I think he's going to brush it off. The first thing he did when he found out about anything was to remove the intelligent, in, intelligence agent that we had in China, in Wuhan. So it, it's almost as if he did know and took steps to reduce the ability for Americans to know about it, to hide it. And that's what I see that he did the most. That was his first thing. And then his second thing that I noticed is how can I make money out of this, off of this? It seems like his delay was to be able to put people in place and corporations in place that they would be able to profit from making the tests that didn't even get made correctly in the beginning. Um, you know, declining the tests that were being offered by WHO and um, discounting their claims all along. So I think he knew all along. I don't think it's that he didn't know or didn't read. I think he just was thinking about this from a different perspective than most people would. Most people would think about it from the perspective of how do I stop this? How do I cure this? How do I keep my people safe? His thinking was, how do I keep them from knowing about it, keeping it secret, and how can I make money on it? Yeah. Uh, Winston, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Oh, there we go. Winston, same question. Um, what's your thoughts about the fact that uh, this is coming to light as, well as, as far as the number of press briefings he had well back in January and February? Uh, it, it, it's... It's information that he dismissed out of hand. The, I think was it was 17 U.S. different U.S. Um, intelligence agencies came to the same conclusion about Russia. Those are all on the officials and enemies list, as are Democrats, as are reporters, uh, as are uh, everybody who does not toe the line. And I think with Dr. Burks, maybe what we're seeing here and what we're seeing with a lot of America is Stockholm Syndrome. You're around it so much it's diluting you. Maybe your husband's got Fox on and you just, and, and it's on all the time. And suddenly you start to, you know, there's some Kool-Aid that's left out. There's nothing else to drink. And you start drinking the Kool-Aid. It may have been that she just might have been broken. So he's not going to pay any attention to those briefings. He will dismiss them, ignore them, or uh, say that he knew all along. It, 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 yeah. What he says is irrelevant. I'm glad that the media is covering it. I mean, when you have to fact check uh, the president in real time, uh, they we need a news summary of what is said. That's it. I mean, the interesting thing that I saw was uh, if we're supposed to be injecting and uh, or consuming disinfectants, does 
Donald Trump not know that they are really not readily available in the aisles anyway? And folks, don't be going out and injecting or <laughs> ingesting disinfectants. Not saying you should, just saying they wouldn't be available if you did. So um, when you have the makers of Lysol and Clorox and Drano saying, yeah, our products are not for human consumption, it's a sad day in yeah. America. I'd like to make an observation because what I've noticed every time that um, reporters and or articles in various publications pinpoint that Donald Trump had been forewarned yet really did very little or very late. We lost six weeks basically of taking solid action against COVID. Uh, his uh, go-to response is, well, look, I shut down China. People didn't want me to do that, but I shut down China. Fact number one, he didn't shut down China. He, he put a travel restriction on it. We still saw no less than 40,000 trips of people coming from China into the United States. So he didn't do it as he likes to use the word ban. I, I banned travel from China, he did not. Also, if you think about it, he closed maybe partially the front door, but he left the back door wide open. On February the 2nd, he put in that, that travel restriction with China, but he waited a full month and a, over a month. March 13th, he put in the travel restriction from Europe to the United States. We know that most of the cases on the East Coast came from Europe. So why did he close one half of the country, but not the other half? Is this, uh, yeah, it's I, a why, trick question, Winston, because there is no answer to this. There's no answer. I, I, I mean, and, and, and when he says we need to liberate America, and then the governor of Georgia says, yeah, I want to liberate my state. And then he gets bonked on the head by the same man telling him to liberate... You're not supposed to liberate the red states. You're supposed to liberate the, the Democratic governor states. That's the unspoken rule that he, that uh, was the problem there. So, yeah. yeah, I think in the other states are like, okay. I Stephanie, thought he wanted us to liberate. Stephanie, will this information that's come to light about how often he was informed, um, how he was warned, will this at all impact his ability to? Uh, retain his popularity and his poll numbers for the coming election? Well, I, I think it will with his base, as, as Cynthia's already, or several of you have already mentioned, that's a pretty strong fact um, that they're, they're with him through hell and high water, as we say. But um, Is the collective memory of our country going to forget this between now and the election? Well, probably not, because one of the things that I believe is already going on is that the nation, the many in the nation have aligned behind a particular individual who could be the, 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 the Democratic uh, nominee. And I believe that when you think about how that works, because this, um, that nominee potentially is, is not, the, you know, uh, the, the, the Superman, he's not got every box checked, okay? But what is it that he does have? And I think one of the things that he does have in relation to your first question to Winston about um, um, his being intelligence briefed so many times before he took any action or, or even acknowledged that it was a fact, um, is that he won't take any information. He says, I listened to 75 people, but he's take, he's sitting there and having all of this information, but he doesn't ingest it and he doesn't bring it in and he doesn't integrate himself with that information or do anything to build a schema of his own about it. I see no evidence. But what happens is I think the people are realizing this, that no matter who he has with him, he can discard them right and left because what, what worth are they? All of these magnificent uh, public servants that have been tossed down the tube, um, they have no value to him because he's never engaged what they have shared with him, no matter the source. And uh, so I think that what we're seeing um, in the nation is this is somebody that's not influenceable. So we need somebody as, as who can be a nice guy, pull us together, has good values, and he listens. He will listen to experienced professionals, policy people, all of the fabulously talented leadership we have out there and expertise. And I believe that that is one of the things that's driving our, the whole nation, our, um, many in the nation who may be a majority, to come to see that we do need this other kind of a person who can listen actually and begin to use that information and not just rely on his own stream of consciousness. Right. 
screen last night. I mean, so we're not getting anything at any higher level of cognition from this man, except what is just streaming out of his head all the time. Yeah. So anyway, I, I think maybe some, that's my proposition about what might be going on here because nobody's perfect. No, there's no perfect candidate. Uh, you can't check every single box as being the best. Well, everybody. let's, let's go on to Stephanie on this one. I'm, let's talk, I, I wanna follow up Stephanie with your, your, your comment about leadership. Uh, Cynthia, I don't know if you saw yesterday, but leadership in the form of our vice president Mike Pence went to the Mayo Clinic and you saw those photos, those videos of Vice President Mike Pence in the midst of a, a, a patient along with the administrators of the Mayo Clinic. Everyone clearly had a mask on except for Vice President did not. And Cynthia, what was your impression and, and what excuse that he put out there, was that sellable? Was that, was that even plausible of an excuse? that he's tested often and that should suffice for his lack of respect to number one, the Mayo Clinic and their policies and procedures, but two, as a leader, as the task force leader for the United States on this problem. Well, that's what bothered me the most was that there's no um, example being made. And, you know, it's one thing maybe on these White House briefings, you don't wear a mask, but when you walk into a hospital that has a specific you know, regulation, and and he was warned. I mean, the Mayo Clinic even said that he was warned before he arrived that he was going to be expected to be wearing a mask. And then when he got there, he refused to do it. I think, just me, I think they should have refused him entrance. I don't think they should have let him in. If That's a good point. Mask, you don't come in. You know, I was in the hospital for a while before all of this pandemic really was declared. And even then, just because it's flu season, Queens Hospital, everybody had to wear a mask. This was all I saw of my caregivers because they all had masks on. Hospitals that do this during the, you know, the months of, of the flu seasons. So this is even, you know, this is like the flu season on steroids. So you especially need to be wearing that mask. And so I think it was very wrong. I think it set a horrible example. Um, you know, one thing if the president wants to be an idiot, but for the vice president also, I mean, we already know he's a sycophant and all that stuff anyway, but good grief to be that irresponsible and disrespectful just cut me to the core. All right, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Winston, was, um, did you have any thoughts on that, on that point? I think Stephanie had a, a comment right before, so let's uh, well, defer. I'm just, but I, I was so astounded because I think he offended the nation by saying, I have all these tests I'm taking all the time when we have people out there in the midst of this who cannot get a test. So I think that that message was absolutely diabolical and that he thought that somehow that would please people and make him um, exempt yeah. the rules. And, and that was offensive to the nation. Well, you know, let's look at the statement as, you know, at itself. I mean, okay, so I get tested today. All it takes is one person with um, non, non symptomatic, asymptomatic to get in my, 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 my area. And then now, even though I've had the test, I can become infected. And it doesn't matter if you've been tested every other day or every four days, um, you can easily become infected right away. And so then you're, you're affected. So uh, it didn't make sense to me logically that uh, for his response as a plausible reason why he didn't wear that mask. Other than I think he didn't want to upset his boss because make his boss, you know, seem like the only one that wasn't doing it. So he had to join in in the stupidity. But that's just my read on it. Back to you, Winston. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, that's, he's a pure sycophant. It does, uh, Mike Pence is the penultimate sycophant. And, and he, what we're, we're looking for is some desperate, some leadership, even that he doesn't have to say anything, just him showing up in a hospital. This is, wasn't a factory that, you know, or talking around a big table with other leaders where they had six feet between them anyway. This is a hospital where you should be wearing a mask pretty much anyway. You go to Asia, people wear masks, have been wearing masks on the streets for years. And just because that's 
that's what you do. But him wearing a mask would have sent a very powerful message that says, we're actually in a pandemic, folks. So while we're liberating your economy, if, we're, if you're one of the states that's being liberated, wear a mask anyway, whether at the hospital, Safeway, whatever, okay, you open your business, at least do this minimum thing. And that wasn't the message there because you're right. The Donald said he would not do it. And um, so therefore, there's no way Mike Pence could do it because that would be that would be um, incredible disobedience for him to do something like that. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie, we just got a question coming in from one of our um, viewers. And the question is, did Dr. Fauci weigh in on Trump's statement on ingesting disinfectants and UV lights? Question mark. I don't recall seeing anything. If not, why not? Did Trump weigh in on that? What? No, did Dr. Fauci weigh in on Donald Trump's statement about ingesting disinfectants and UV lights? No, I never heard Dr. Fauci, but I believe I heard Dr. Brooks say something about it. And also immediately after the comment was made, the messages were coming from the companies, the corporations. Don't please don't drink Clorox, your, your Drano example. They started putting out that information because they understand how influential uh, the, a statement that can be to, to youngsters and adolescents and, and who knows, uh, you know, the waywardness of kids. I mean, it's incredibly dangerous. And there may be a few adults that get goofy and are desperate and yeah. will drive themselves to do well, anything. Fear will make you do all sorts of crazy things. And, and that plays right into it. Their fear and his words. So that's, that's, a, that's a dangerous, scary combination. You should have been really, really clear about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we got a couple minutes left, and Stephanie, I'm going to go to you the last question, and then we'll head to Winston, and we'll call it a day. Um, we know that testing is a big part of all these businesses opening up. We know that we don't have enough tests. We know we're doing about 220,000 versus what Harvard thinks we should be doing at least 5 million a day. Donald Trump was quoted yesterday to say, we're going to be very close to that very soon. <laughs> Cynthia, what was your – I don't know if you saw that or not, but what was your impression or your response – to go from 220,000 tests per day to 5 million, and Donald Trump saying, we're very close. Well, if you look back from the beginning, everything has been going to be very soon. Everything he says, very soon. Very soon is a very hard to define moment, right? Because very soon could be tomorrow. It could be next month. And, you know, people are opening their states now. Those tests need to be now, not very soon. And, and if he would maybe define exactly what he means by very soon, I might feel a little better about the whole thing. Yeah, okay. Winston, your last final thoughts? Uh, yeah, fact check. Go to your local credible authorities on what you should be doing for your health, safety, and welfare. Uh, turn off the news when... Um, less credible people are talking and uh, rely on true experts that, that, will, that are doing all they can to protect you. Um, and that's it because we, we have to go uh, where the leadership is, where true credible leadership is. And it's out there, we're seeing it. Um, you, but like everything, you gotta, you gotta look for it. You gotta come here to Think Tech and find the news too. There right? you go. I think those are wise words, Winston. And I thank you very much for joining us this week. Stephanie, thank you so much for your insights and your comments. And Cynthia, as always, I appreciate everything you bring to the table and, and make us think very hard on where we go from here. So until next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we'll see you all again at Trump Week. Much aloha.